Today I want to talk to you a little bit about RopeCam. It's a software that lets you use standard turning tools to create threads that might need a custom turning tool otherwise. It does it by using a series of threading can cycles and each can cycle will have the tip of that tool in a different position. And as you'll see as I go through the setup, you can set up roughing and finishing this way. Okay. Got a little video. It's uh, going to show you a, a, the concept anyways, where you can see there's can cycle one, can cycle two. And again, each one will have the tip of the tool in a different position and cutting a little bit more. And then at the end, you'll have the whatever shape that you were looking for out of your thread. And so I'm going to bring it up here. It's very easy to use. It's got kind of a step-by-step -step tab type order here. Uh, with some instructions, okay, but the first page is, is pretty standard stuff. Uh, first, it's what kind of uh, thread that you wanted to make, and that will change whatever you can put in the thread data. So I'm going to stick on a rope thread for now, but I, I'll come back to that. Is that thread on the outside of the piece, or is it on the inside of the piece, of course? You have your units. I'm just going to leave it, leave it in... Uh, metric right now, but Imperial is obviously there and you would change all of your numbers to suit. And you have your approach and retract, if it's going to do that simultaneously, or if it's doing it more of a dog leg movement, where it's moving an X and then Z. Now, once it's, uh, if you decide to do roughing, you can do roughing, of course, but then there's a finish pass at the end, and you can decide the increment of that finish cut here. So the smaller that number, the finer the finish will be, the uh, smaller the step over. But these are the positions I'm talking about where each thread cycle, that's the position of the tool. Um, now, obviously, this picture is just a picture, and it's all up to the numbers that you put in. But that finish can be doing, done in a certain direction, so you can come in this way or you can go back this way. And you can also say from top down only so that it never goes and climbs up a, uh, a slant or anything like that. As I mentioned, it's standard turning tools, so you have a regular turning tool and you can give it the nose radius here. And you can also turn on the grooving tool here and give it the width. And then depending on what you're using, uh, you can choose to come in off the side or the center of the tool. Okay, so that's where the the dimension will will come off for the the uh, for the offset of the tool. You'll have a start point, right? So it's going to start somewhere off the piece, and then an end point wherever it's going to end that thread, and, and begin another can cycle. And then you have the Q type code is just uh, certain machines. Uh, Morisiki, I want to say, um, they may use Q values in the code, so you can turn that on as well. But pretty straightforward stuff here. Okay, just deciding basically what tool, a couple of different sorting options, and, and how fine that finish pass is. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's a different thread, uh, basically a different diagram, uh, each thread. So to get there, I can press OK, or I can just go to Thread Data. And here's where we're punching in all the info of that thread. Okay, I'm going to just use it, the default numbers, but obviously you would want to put in whatever numbers would create the thread you're looking for. Okay, so again, straightforward callouts here. You may have that thread going on a, a, a taper or some kind of an angle, so you can definitely put the degrees in there. And you may have more than one start on that thread. So it may actually have that same thread happening uh, maybe two or three times. Uh, around the same piece. Now, if I was to create a different thread, let's say I go to the, the trapezoid here, and you can see it has a flat on the top, and that flat really could be turned down, and then you're only roughing and finishing out, let's say, the, the form here. But there is an option here, and you can see it's just going to add so that it's cutting on the top as well. So it's going to cut that notch out, but it's also going to have a finish on that uh, that flat as well. Okay. You can see the different threads coming up here. 
right? Different diagrams. This one's a newer one they just added. Uh, I will say this is version 10.4, so it's it's nice and fresh. They always uh, seem to be adding new things. Okay. So once that's done, I'll go back to my rope thread here, thread data, fill it all in. Again, angle, uh, number of starts. Then, again, you can press OK, or you can just go to the next tab. And this is what it's going to do. So is it going to do just roughing or just finishing? Or do you want that to do a full rough inside, uh, leave a certain amount, and then finish that amount after? All right, so I'm going to leave it on uh, rough and finishing right now. But you could just do a, a finish pass as well uh, on certain things. Or uh, if you were trying to run it, again, uh, at a, for a different size. So roughing and finishing using two separate tools versus roughing and finishing using the same tool. So the same tool would just use the tool that you uh, described on the first page, right? And the same feeds and speeds, and I'll show you where to, to put that in the, the thread cycle setup, all right? Or just to jump ahead and see, there would be your open and your close for the program. But if you would like, you can use different tools, and that'll bring up a, uh, a radius value for the roughing tool right, that you can give if it was different, uh, or if it's the same, you still have to give it. And then it's going to let you put in whatever you want for the top, so the header of that roughing, and then whatever you want for the footer of that roughing. And if you pick roughing and finishing, then this will happen. And then on the thread cycle setup page, then you can come in here and you can give your header and your footer for the finishing. All right, and then of course we have numbers here, um, what you want to use. So I want to step over as I'm roughing, let's say, uh, half a million millimeter in this case, and I'm stepping down 0.4 for each level catch level, the uh, uh, X level, and I'm leaving a 0.05 millimeter amount to finish with a finish pass. And of course, I've given my, my increment for that finish pass earlier. And then I can always use a, a uh, override the first depth and, and have a, a uh, bigger or smaller depth for the first cut if I want. So again, this is going to rough in the middle using these and a separate tool. This is all up to you, whatever you want to put in, and you'll see that as you go ahead. There's, uh, It's very open-ended where you're putting the codes you want, and, and uh, it's just uh, creating the, the format for you. Okay, so it's going to open up with this code here. It's going to insert all of the roughing code, so all of those can cycles are going to happen. And then it's going to insert this code here. And then it's going to go on to the finishing. Again, pressing OK, we're going to thread cycle setup. And here's what I was talking about too, where it's very open-ended. Um, you can use a variety of different uh, can cycle uh, threading cycles. It's going to depend on your control. Um, so the, the, there's different uh, special cases as well that I'll, I'll bring up. But here uh, I'm using G92. You know, if your threading cycle can do taper, then it'll have a code that would obviously support that. And you saw the taper that I could put in the thread data. Uh, the pitch code. And depending if you wanted that X and Z on the same line, or if you wanted it happening with the X on one line and then the Z on the next, okay, which would be separate lines. Again, all these guys will depend on on uh, different things, um, mainly the, the control you're using. You have a tool clearance, so this is the clearance it's going to use, and that's an incremental clearance off of the diameter, the, the outer diameter of the thread. Okay, so this will stay off half a mil, let's say, and again, putting your own numbers, whatever works for you. There's a accuracy for the, uh, the, the values themselves, so how many decimal places it'll keep. And then another one where it depends on the cycle you're using and the, the machine, but you may be able to uh, have a variable pitch where the pitch actually changes as it goes. Okay, and again, entering the, uh, the code you need and, and all the, the information it's looking for. 
Now the uh, roughing would be done at this point and once that roughing footer here at the end is done then it'll pick up in the same file with this guy here. So now you can see it's going to a new tool in this case, right? A finishing tool, let's say. Um, not absolutely necessary all the time, and that's why you have the options, uh, different spindle speed, let's say. You know, all, all whatever you're putting in here. So any special codes, any special notes you want to, to give to the operator, uh, it's all open-ended here. It's going to insert all of the finishing can cycles, and then it's going to go ahead and pop this right at the footer, uh, the main end of the, 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 the whole program. Now, when it makes a uh, the code itself, it can also throw in all, all the, these different numbers that I, that I have in here. You know, again, if you want to convey that over to the operator, then you can always say to add the measurements into the NC code itself, and they'll be commented out and, and appear up in the in the header of that code as well. Right. I'm going to jump ahead a second, um, but this tab and this is another one where it, it's been added more recently, and, and they're very open. Uh, this was one that um, one of our customers needed, and we got in touch with the the creators of RopeCam, and they had it added very quickly. So uh, if you end up using the software and you see anything, any kind of holes or anything that you desire, then uh, feel free to get in touch with us. Okay, but this was just a, a uh, entry and exit kind of angle. As it finishes that thread, it, um, it'll actually take that uh, same thread and have it changing in the X so that it would just taper off instead of having that thread just end somewhere. That would just manipulate it so that it would actually have that thre thread trailing off into um, a, a shallower version of that thread until it was gone. Okay, and nice and easy, you would just say use entry or, or use exit or both, and you can put in the numbers, and you can even calculate the, the angle that comes up with. So an easy 5 and 5, you can see it'll give you 45 degrees. Okay. And there is a note here, though, um, where, again, it's if your control supports it and uh, the code and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, once everything's all set up, you must simulate the, the um, toolpath first before you can do any kind of post-processing. But that's where you'll get to see it. And you can see, again, it's doing its roughing. So, again, each one of these points represents one single can cycle and it's going to run a can cycle there and there and there and there along the whatever pitch that you're using and that's going to gradually dig out that uh, that groove there with um, a number of x cuts basically depth in x then at the end we can see our finish press and it's quite tight you know that's quite a few can cycles so it's going to be a nice uh, and smoother finish than if we were to use a, a bigger number, right? And the the shape of that would obviously change depending on the the thread that you were doing. And we can do a zoom if we want to, and you can see it'll simulate a little bigger and a speed for the the uh, simulation to go. But that's an important thing to note: is you have to simulate. And once it's simulated and you're happy, then you'll have the option to post process that and create the actual code that you'll run. It's just about clicking there. You can see it opens up and we have whatever we have. So there's our opening statement there for our rougher and then you can see all the can cycles going through, each one of them being a, a separate position in the roughing. Goes all the way. Now we have it going into our second tool for finishing. You know, a different RPM let's say. And again all of the can cycle positions for the finishing and then you can see here our closing statement and our code is finished so ready to be saved sent whatever you want to do with it now just to finish off in the menus of course you can save the project you know open projects you've saved already so uh, you can keep it or alter it in the future 
there is a preference for the uh, rapid moves if would, you would like a G0 on every row. Okay, um, G0, uh, the rapid, most of the time will stay active, so you may only need it on the first row and then everything's going to be fine, but that, this will just force it to go on every row uh, instead of just the first one. And there's um, a specific Okuma type where the, uh, I believe it's the, the taper will output differently uh, than the Fanuc type, so that may come up. And again, this, these are things that only might come up if you're using a certain machine or a certain control, um, and it uses that kind of output. And of course, there's some help. Um, they have a, a, a threading example there that goes through how that works, the, the uh, taper. Um, and then on their website, they have a little video as well. You have this video, and uh, you can always call for help as well. So I hope you enjoyed this little run-through of RopeCam, and feel free to give us a call if you're interested. Take care.